The Ides of March was a time for the Romans to settle debts, but Rishi Sunak's 3rd of March brush with hard realities will, in part, be an exercise in releasing numbers which for most voters will be beyond any rational comprehension. A people's budget from a people's government and I commend it to this house. Borrowing in the year of Covid looks set to be over £450 billion. The deficit is likely to be over 21% of GDP. National debt racked up by successive governments will be well over £2 trillion. And to compound the grief, the UK economy shrank by 10% last year, more than double the contraction of the world economy at 4.3%. He has three objectives, support the economy until lockdown is materially lifted, lay some initiatives for the coming years and indicate how he might start to address the scale of the deficit in the medium to longer term. Many businesses, large and small, have borrowed a lot of money. Some people have dug into their own pension schemes to try and make their business survive. We're looking for serious financial support, even going forward as we start to open up. Tax hikes on ordinary families are a non-starter. Taking money out of the economy when business needs a boost is the imperative this year and next. So, what taxes could go up? Corporation tax looks a certain bet. Fuel duty, that perennial pre-budget talking point, might also increase. National insurance hikes for the self-employed have been mooted. Capital gains tax increases were on the Treasury radar pre-COVID. There has even been talk of a one-off wealth tax. But that would be an ideological piece of humble pie. No Conservative Chancellor, I suspect will want to choke on. It's much more likely that this budget will be about how to spend more money to get businesses and individuals through the rest of this crisis and to focus on economic recovery. So I don't think those hard decisions on, on tax rises or spending cuts are going to be made now um, and, and they'll be kind of kicked down the road. The significance of the budget will be the signals it sends for future tax years and in particular the steer it will give on when the real pain will start. The Ides of March also marked, of course, the assassination of Julius Caesar. This budget could make or break Sunak's reputation and future ambitions. Already the more ideologically robust Tories are sharpening the knives, fearing he is forever lost to a high spending, big state agenda.